Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to improvise on the piano and pretty much any instrument or maybe you're a producer or uh, an arranger using a DAW watching this. You can use this technique for any kind of improvisation or composition with just two notes in a beat. So the rule for this entire lesson, what I like about improvisation is when you set a very, very simple rule for yourself, you're kind of stuck in that room and you're made to work and you're made to create something. So the, the rule or the this kind of jail cell which I'm putting you in for this particular lesson is going to be one beat and two notes. So one beat you're not allowed with one note. You're not going to do three. You're not going to do four. You're not going to have nothing either. Well, you could have nothing if you want to take a break, which is nice at times. But one beat, two notes. So a beat of music doesn't mean it should have a sound. A beat is basically a time container for a musical event. A musical event could be a note, a chord or anything that produces sound for a human or hopefully other animals as well. And Inside that beat, you can even have subdivisions if ever you choose to divide those. So in a beat, you don't have to necessarily have one note. You can have nothing. You can even have a rest. But you can divide that beat into two. You can divide it into three. You can divide it into four. And then that container starts having many more sub-containers. Sort of like now you, if you divide by two, you can have maybe the same container with salt and pepper. But imagine mixing the two together. That would be horrific, isn't it? So the container concept used in music is very applicable and useful because the the length of the container or the volume or the area or any which way you look at the container, it's an amount of time which elapses. So if music has a tempo of let's say 60 beats per minute, then every beat is going to flow at the rate of one second. So your container is one second. In that one second, you can do whatever you want. So in your software, if you do 60 BPM or in your app or uh, metronome application, if it says 60 BPM, you're basically moving like a clock. If you're saying 120 BPM, which is a commonly used BPM in uh, recording, you could say that that speed of the of the you could say that the speed of the beat is 500 milliseconds, or it's moving half of a second. Now, using all of that, we're going to just take two notes, and in that beat, we are going to look at all the different ways of playing the two notes using the beat divisions nothing other than beat divisions and then we'll try and get some poetic framework into play and see how we can combine all these binary rhythm patterns together using very simple poetic concepts. So stick around till the very end of this lesson because there'll be a good stepwise flow as we go along the lesson, right? And before we get started, all my handwritten notes for this lesson are waiting for you on our Patreon page. Do consider heading over there and checking it out. You'll also get staff notation, MIDI tracks, not only for this lesson, but all of our lessons that we have been doing for years and years on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications either right now or else after the lesson would still be great. Cheers and let's get cracking. So in order to improvise over this system where you have one beat and two notes, two notes in other words note one, note two, you know two of those hits, two sounds, we need a scale, right? So let's just take a simple scale which we all tend to enjoy for improv, the pentatonic scale. There are two kinds of pentatonic scales. The major pentatonic, which is one, two, three, five, six octave, and it comes down. Or else you can do the minor pentatonic, which we'll focus on in this lesson. I'm on the key of A, so A minor pentatonic would be A, C, D, E, G, A, A, G, E, D, C, A. If you build that intervillically, root, minor third or flat three, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor seventh or dominant seventh or flat seven. The octave just finishes the climb, okay? So A minor pentatonic, we are going, we'll use this for the lesson, but you can use a chord set of chord tones, you can use another scale, you can use a pattern of notes, you can do thirds of some scale, it could be major, minor, Dorian or whatever. So the lesson is not about 
too much of theory i don't want to get too much out of rhythm because rhythm is the forefront of today's lesson and i believe very strongly that if you know your rhythm in and out if you can bring it out instinctively you can improvise on the spot you can do anything on the fly while a lot of other things like harmony and scales you can just do it by reading the chord charts you can do it by practice you know regular scale exercises and patterns but rhythm is something you have to internalize once you get all of those patterns into your system it just comes out magically you know in in some assortment which which a lot of people including yourself will enjoy so let's just take a minor pentatonic and start with a simple framework wherein i need two notes in a beat so what should i do i have to divide the beat at least by two units isn't it if i don't divide the beat then i can have a max of one note or i can have two notes whack together in a harmonic way but in this lesson it's about melodic movement so if i have to get in two notes i have to divide the beat into two units at the bare minimum so to divide by two i can say one and two and three and four and one and two now i can use the word and three to signify the sub beat and you're going to get one permutation one and two and three and like this right one and two and three so you'll get two notes but you have a pentatonic scale so you can move around the scale one and two and three and four and 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 one now if you'd like to go in thirds maybe minor scale thirds and two and three and four and one and two now one way to make this interesting is just look at it in a binary way you have two notes they are going up you can also take the same notes and go down so a c c a so in a binary sense in terms of pitch you either go up pitch or down pitch so you can do a lot of interesting things however the ry rhythm is rather same isn't it 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and now if you play this for a long time that's going to ra sound rather monotonous and also confusing at times because if you play too many notes then 1 and 2 and 3 and you won't remember there's no full stop or there's no sentence separators you know like full stops and commas and punctuation so we need to create those gaps and the gaps right now are non existent you could also do 1 and 2 3 and 4 One and two and three and four. You can combine the the two quavers. One and two and three and four. And one and two with some pauses. Four. One and two. And now there's some there's a story being told. There are some sentences being constructed. One and two, three and four. As opposed to one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So basically, stop whenever you want is what I'm trying to say. You're dividing by two, and whenever you get the chance, you're adding two notes in that beat, or else you can just do one note in the beat or do nothing like. Busier with all the beats filled up, some gaps. Now it's making a statement with that gap, mm. with some build up, I guess, without gaps, with gaps. it's more anthemic right it creates the hook of the song so to speak okay so rhythmically speaking that's all you can do you can have some gaps or don't have the gaps but the division system is still two so i'd like to have more options so what do i do i can divide further i can divide by 3 i can divide by 4 uh, i'll come to 3 later in the lecture but if i divide by 4 I now have four mini containers in the space of that one original container which I had 
two, three, four. The container became one and two and three and four and now it can become one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. so more spaces, more slots to squeeze in different kinds of ingredients which if you now place them at 1e and 2e and and now just observe 1e and 2e and 3 it feels different to put a note at the end 1e and 2e and 3 it feels remarkably different to put it at the er uh now 1e and a 2e and a 3 and a 4 so what was once 1 2 and 3 and 4 will now be 1 a 2 a 3 a 4 yeah, up one e and up two. Okay, and even the e's sound different. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e. So every subdivision has its own personality, almost has its own energy or emotion, if you want to use the word. I would say personality or energy. There's a different kind of energy. If you play on the beat, one, two, three, it feels normal. One, well, one and two and three. Now some motion, one and to some excitement while uh, one e and two e and it's almost like a shock you got when you play the e or perform the e one e and two e and three e versus one e and a two e and a three e and a four the er is very groovy it almost if you want to catch it you have to move to in order to uh, use that in your in your improvisation so now if i do some displacements because i've already done divided by two so i have one and into the play now what do i want to do start dividing by four one e and a two e and a, and now instead of doing one and why don't i do one at at up up one at at Right, I can do things like that. So I'm now shifting one e and a two e, a three e, a four e, a one e, a two. So one e, a two on, and then the a. Uh. Let's see how that goes with the a minor. And because it's irregular, you don't have to take too many gaps like we did with quavers. Quavers are actually getting boring because they are very symmetric. Rhythmically speaking, so every note is you're talking in a very monotonous way with no gaps with no punctuation While with the 16th note usage now where we used a dotted quaver One e and a and then a semi quaver or a 16th note. It gives you that sense of rhythmic excitement one e and a two I don't even need gaps on the pentatonics or some other scale. Notes are not very very important in this lesson. Just to pin ourselves down, I've given us A minor pentatonic. So So we did, we displaced the and and moved it to the a. Uh. One e and a two e and a three and a four e and a one e and a. To compare with normal quavers. And a two e and a three and a three and a one e and So, what if we combine that? Quaver set the uh, um, bum dotted. You don't even need pauses because there's a lot of variety, you know. So, what did we do? We move the and to the a. Uh. We can do something else. Why don't we take the and and move it to the e? And you get one e and two e and three e and four e and up. Just to compare with the other one, with the er. Just ending with two, two, two quavers for that contrast. Now, one E. One E. 
Juan Ian. Back to one E and a two verses. So it's still two notes in a beat, and I think the music is getting pretty interesting at this stage, especially if you do combinations. You know. So what do I know so far? I know my quavers, dotted quaver, and then a semi quaver or dotted quaver and a sixteenth note. Then I have sixteenth note and a dotted quaver. All quavers. combining these three You can go pretty much on and on with the same five note scale pretty much and just these three rhythm patterns but there are more so let's move forward there are quite a few binary options actually there are nine which i have for you in this lesson the nine came about primarily as the maths gave us the nine which is two notes in one beat so let's move forward we can do one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a why not this you call this pattern four and a two e and three and four so i'm keeping that cluster at the and and the uh so and it's always nice to contrast that with a pulse especially because you don't have a one going on now Okay, so you have just this gang of notes now created. First of all, so let's look at those four rhythms together. We first have a dotted quaver and ending off with a semi quaver. One E and a hit points. One E and a two E and a. now we have a cluster at the one and the E. You can hold on the E for the till the end of the beat, or choke it if you wish. But very similar because the hit points are the same. Then you can have a cluster at the E and the and. E. So you're not starting on, you're starting off. And last cluster of the sixteens will be and a. Uh. Okay. So that pretty much covers our divisions of four, right? Using sixteen nodes. Where else can we place? Oh, there's one more, which I think is the most exciting. That would be whacking on the e and the a. Uh. So you're giving up the one, which is very lazy. You're giving up the and, which is kind of normal, but you're hitting only at the e's and the a's. Uh. So the only way you can play this is to play it with a lot of excitement. So if I just take an A minor chord, maybe with a pulse. You know, you get that one e and a, uh, one e and a. Uh, mm, mm, mm. So this will always work well when you do combinations. So if you come back to quavers, and then one e and a, uh, two e and a, uh, three e and a, uh, four e. Back to quavers. So.
those of you who are into kannada music riffs might like that so 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 i what am i doing here i am doing two quavers one e and two e and and then ending it off with an e and an a one e and two e and a one e and two e and a one e and two e and a three so if not improvisation and making a melody for, uh, for for the right hand or the treble clef you can also use this to create some low end riffs okay now if i get out of that mode and do something like What am I doing now? One E and a two E and E and in the second beat. So pum pum. You can make these little riffs. You don't even have to play this on the piano. You can kind of fool around in a recording application using your MIDI editor. If if you had something very symmetrical and 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 or too many notes, just remove a few and then move them around and see which one sounds good to you. Okay, these are just permutations for the for the beat at one beat. Okay, so what do we have? Dividing by four, we have five of them. We have five rhythm patterns, right? And dividing by two, we just have one, one and two and. So, So one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e two e three e four e and a and a and a and a e and e and e and e and e a e a e a e a. So those are the five options which you can start putting together, and that's about it when it comes to dividing by four. Now what what's left? We can divide by three perhaps. We can divide the beat by anything, but why forget three? Three is a very common division. Triplets as we call them. So one, two, three, four. One triplet, two triplet, three. One and a two and a. So if you get into this wavelength, two and a three and a four and a one and a, we can start doing permutations. First, start with all three. But what was our rule in this lesson? Two notes in a beat. So this is not going to work. So what do we do? Let's knock off the middle one. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. Some might also want to call this swing because it kind of is swinging, isn't it? So we've removed the middle one. Why not remove the first one? So kitta 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 one and a two and a three. And you can also remove the last one and do. One and one and two and tuck it tuck it tuck it. So what are all my triplet permutations? Knocking off the middle one. Then ikitta 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 tinta tinta. Knocking off the last triplet. So one and a two. And if we play with just the triplets now.
The yeah. idea is to fool around with all those triplet permutations, and you have a few more. I'm just trying to trap you into only doing, you know, have a disciplined approach. Now, when you start improvising without a plan, you might end up going into your zone very fast. The reason you tend to go into that, at least, it happens to me. and it becomes counterproductive to what we are trying to achieve which is to create new pieces of music the challenge is you tend to play what you already know because that's your survival instinct so the first 10 minutes is crucial or first 15 20 minutes is crucial when you improvise have a proper plan write it down and see this is what i have to do do it very diligently in a very textbook way and then roll with it and then go into a creative environment and then you don't have to care but i would say give the first 10 to 15 minutes for music you know for the rules and regulations which music already has for the maths that it possesses okay and then the creativity should naturally happen you shouldn't just play the key, the keyboard or the guitar and just say oh i'm going to be creative that's not how it works you will become creative if you get into the environment or into the world of music so with improvisation this is what works for me i start with a plan even a simple exercise on the piano could end up being an improvisation and an improvisation could end up being a song because what i tend to tell people and even myself is improvisation is just nothing but fast composition and composition may be called a slow improvisation okay so maybe it's the same thing so we have about nine rhythm patterns right actually we have we have discussed nine there was one with dividing by two quavers five dividing by four semi quaver involved with a dotted quaver and some rests and that is six and then three triplets so if i want to put this together you could just kind of take it to town do combinations but i don't want to leave you until we have something very defined and very structured so for this look at it like how people write poems or how people build rhyming phrases in general you know uh, even most musical genres if you look at blues for example it follows an a a b structure which takes you across 12 bars of song writing okay so generally you will have things like a b a b or a a a b so if you what is a and b a is phrase 1 or motif 1 Uh, as i am considering b would be motif 2 so if i take the an a phrase which is this one 1 e and a 2 e and that's my a phrase and if i take phrase b i want to combine them together so let's start with maybe 3 a's and a b see how that sounds mm So that triple A was tang ta tang ta tang ta tang tang, and the B will be something different. Tang ta tang ta tang ta tang 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 ta 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 tang 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 ta tang ta tang ta tang pam pam. So that A B, and you can even do double A double B. That'll sound. That'll inspire you differently. Okay, or maybe A B A B a quick uh, interchange. Or uh, everyone's favorite ABBA A double B A. Now, if you're getting a bit confused to remember what you're composing, yes, you could record it on your phone, but you can compose it such that maybe A is a slightly different. direction of movement maybe you could go ascending direction for a tang tang that's your up and b could always be down so it's the same a b b a but you're just making it interesting for yourself okay by look, looking at different notes different directions of notes uh, what about a triple b 
How does that work? Double A B A have we done that? No, I don't think so. So A B A A And if ever we bring in a C for some energy, maybe I can compose a phrase as A A B C, and the C could be that high energy phrase. One E and a. Uh. So maybe something like. That's your A, one E and a two E and a three and a. That's your B. Then at the three beat. Mm-mm. And why I did four beats? So A basically is a beat with and contained in it is a motif. Why I did four is because our common time signature is four by four in music. So A A B C. You can even do A B A C, which will be a lot of fun. So you get the idea. You can do these. combinations of notes and see how it goes from there because you need structure whenever you play an instrument and whenever you're composing or creating anything you need an environment to be a very respectful high energy and very inspiring environment for that i like the maths with a lot of options and definitely i would always practice or try to practice with a pen paper or a tablet if you use one like i tend to do sometimes so keep that in mind plan before you play so if you were to take one thing from this lesson it would probably be to plan before you improvise to plan before you get into a creative zone and have all your options on the plate try it out give 15 to 20 minutes to music and then let it do something to you which you have no clue about that's generally how i get into composing or improvising or producing or doing anything in this field always have start with a plan and then see where it goes so in this lesson our plan was pretty simple one beat two notes so then think what is possible divide by 2 divide by 3 divide by 4 how many options 9 now when we put them together it will be like a jigsaw puzzle it will be too difficult to solve so we want a more poetic structure with some phrasing so things like a a a b and where did all that come from again permutations and combinations because how many a's can you have in a bar of four beats well at the max four a's but then four a's is boring then you just have one rhythm so i need to have what's the what's the math here you can tell me in the comments if you know the nc formula you know when our maths class maybe type it in the comments that'll be fun basically you want a minimum of two a phrase and a b phrase so you don't want all a's and all b's so to speak right guys so that was a lesson on how to improvise using rhythm and using the binary properties of beats and how and the divisions of beats hope you found the lesson useful the notes are there for you waiting for you on patreon right thanks a ton for watching the lesson catch you in the next one cheers